Happy Monday. Welcome to the Healing She Got Faith show. This is Lily. I am the founder of Healing She Got Faith, and I am also the host of the Healing She Got Faith talk show. And it is talk show Monday. Um, It is October. Can y'all believe it? I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. Like, this September have somewhere the, to be? I don't know. But it's October. It's a new month. Um, we are closer to the new year. And I just, I love October. October is kind of bittersweet for me because it is the month that my mom passed away. But it is my birthday month. And it's also just been such a... It's always been one of my favorite months because I just think a lot is going on. You got homecoming, Halloween, birthdays, um, just a lot of good stuff happens in October. Um, so, yeah. Uh, you know, what is today that the episode is airing? October 3rd. So, October 4th, which will be tomorrow, is actually the four-year mark of uh, my mom passing. And then also, it will be the one-year mark of me releasing my first published work which was everyone has a story and um a lot has happened in one year a lot has happened in four years it is surreal that my mom has not been here um i think about that a lot um in therapy currently i'm working through like projected anger misplaced grief misplaced anger <laughs> and um i'm working through like just different seasons of my life that I never really got over. Um, and I think one of the hardest parts has been that, like, I'm never going to get over my mom's death. And I'm never going to get over how she died, the process of everything that we had to go through. And I'm never going to get over that, like, she was finally happy in life for, and then she died. Um, so I think about that a lot. And I think, like, losing my mom... It brought a lot of stuff to surface, which honestly is really what brought me to this place of there is power in grief. So like we're in the series, The Power of Grief. And when I went to Cabo in July, that was the topic I spoke on. It was the power of grief and just everything that um, just everything that we um that we go through, but we don't acknowledge. And just like really seeing that grief does something for us, regardless um, how we view it. Um, I think a lot of the times we have like this negative connotation about grief, but in reality, like, you know, it, it doesn't have to be negative. It is a natural part of life. Just like death doesn't have to be negative. Um, I think we make it negative because, you know, we lose people and loss and hurt hurts. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've just kind of been reflecting on that. This year has been different. Like I'm usually planning something as far as like in memory of things. I'm usually like just doing something big. And this year I just, I didn't want to do it. I just wanted to sit with how I felt. I just wanted to sit with what it was and like the emotions have been there you can definitely tell it's like my grieving season so that's you know that's interesting that something new that I'm dealing with I'm also in therapy like the week um from like September 26th to October 4th I was in therapy like three times a week working through things you know I needed to get it I needed to process it and find a solution because Everybody ain't always a problem. Like, it's me. So I'm really trying to figure out myself and what that is. So, um, yeah, there's that. <laughs> um, October. So, man, October's there's so much going on. Like I said, it's the four years of my mom. It's the one year of my book. It's also the grand opening. I also have a friend who had a grand opening yesterday. BB's Bake Shop down here in St. Louis, and I have been with her since Saturday working on stuff, and um, by the time you hear this podcast, I'm probably still with her, because <laughs> um, definitely after this podcast, after I record, I'm, I'm going straight to her, so yeah, and then on Friday, I had such a dope um, event, there was um, 
there was one of has she been on she has been on the show um if you guys have been listening there was one time a couple months ago we had like a double hitter it was an episode and then it was another episode on in connection strategies with um i think they on her platform they call her essie but sharita niles um i call her plum but yeah so and so she had this event called bonding over beverages so that was our friday night we did that and that was really cool got to hang out with some dope women got to strategize and just um network and really get to like talk about stuff that yeah like i could talk about stuff in therapy but like sometimes you just need to know like hey like you're not the only one going through this and so just like really reflecting on life and networking and just things of that nature so that was pretty dope um yesterday's uh not yesterday saturday i was with my actually no saturday i was at the building doing some stuff for the grand opening. Then I actually went to support another local author at her book signing. And then I was with my friend, Amber, who's who opened the cookie shop um, yesterday. So yeah, it's been busy, y'all. It has been so busy, but we're here. We're showing up. Listen, we're here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into our icebreaker. So I picked um, from the universe has your back to... I mean, the universe has your back and then dream cards, change your thoughts and change your life. Um, I'm still in this season where I just really need to hear from God. Like I like I said last episode, there's nothing wrong. My faith isn't being tested. Like, but I just I'm in a season where I just need to hear from God. I just need to hear what is it that I'm missing? Like I feel like there's blockages. I feel like there is just something that I am missing, which is why I'm like in therapy so much as of late and why I am just, I just, I just need to hear from God. And I think for so long, for majority of my life, I've just needed to hear from other people. And now I'm just at that place where like, I actually don't need to hear from people. I need to hear from God. I need to hear from the source. Um, so yeah, let's start with the dream cards. Card one, taking everything life has to offer, the happy and the sad, Trust that you are always where you should be and you are given the lessons you need to move forward. I think this is such a hard concept um, because one, nobody wants to be sad. Like we really look at these other feelings that are not so positive as negative and they're not necessarily negative. But when the card says trust that you are always where you should be, you know, that's just hard. That's hard. Like sometimes you go through stuff and you're like, dang, like I, I should I really be here? Because we put this expectation that we should be so much further than what we actually are. And the reality is like, um, we may not be ready. Like I sit back and think about my building and how it took three years to get here. And the reality is I don't necessarily think that I would have been ready three years ago to launch this program, to launch this building, to do everything I needed to do. There came so much life lessons, honey. And it was life, it was long and expensive lessons. And also too, in this time, I was finding myself. I was figuring out who I was. I was relearning myself, which is so hard to do. Like we don't talk enough about how you have to relearn yourself in different seasons. Like right before I came on, to record, I actually did the love language um, test. I don't know why I woke up and decided to do that. Um, it was just really random. <laughs> I don't know what I be thinking about y'all, but I did it, and my results are completely different than like when I took it the last time, which I couldn't even tell you the last time I took it. I usually try to take stuff like that in different seasons, but I honestly couldn't tell you the last time I took that test. Um, but I still had the results from last time. So like. I took the test this morning. It was completely different. And so it's just like one of them things like you do have to trust that where you are is where you should be, you know, because the reality is there are lessons like the car says that and you are given the lessons you need to move forward, which I definitely was giving a hell of a lot of lessons to move forward. I was given so many lessons to like personally, spiritually, financially, um, professionally. I was given lessons that like I just don't know. 
if I was ready to receive at certain points in life. And I think that's so important because we have to be honest with each other. Like there are certain, we have to be honest with ourselves. There are certain points where we're just not ready for the next step. And a lot of times we look down on ourselves and we tell ourselves like, oh, that's failure or oh, that whatever the case may be. Um, But... But at the end of the day, like we have to be able, we have to be able, we have to be able to admit where we're at. We have to know that there are life lessons. And so it is hard to trust. I'm not going to sit up here and say, hey, like I got this down pack. I absolutely do not. I am healing. I am learning myself. I am shedding the scales off of my eyes. I'm taking the blinders off. I'm still in that part of healing. I have not been doing this for years. That's debatable. I have not been taking it seriously for years. Um, Doing the type of work that I've been doing is fairly new. So I'm not here to be a guru of healing. But I'm here. And that's what Healing She Got Faith stands for. Like When I initially made Healing She Got Faith, it was to invite the follower and the reader on the healing journey with me. Like it was never to be like, hey guys, look at me, five ways to heal. No, it was, hey, I'm about to start this thing. I don't know where it's going to go. Here you go. Read it, don't read it. And then I'm going to still do what I got to do. That's what that was. So yeah. Okay, second card from Dream Cards. Life is at your service. You are worthy of everything you desire. Give life permission to create through you and become visible through your dreams. Woo! This was for me. And I'm going to tell you why. Like, when I picked up the deck of cards, this card was on top facing up. And so I was like, oh, let me read it. The card that I'm about to read after this was the same thing. Like, it was, um, I picked up the card deck and it was facing up. My God, this is what I needed. Life is at your service. This in my healing journey has been a life lesson. Life is at your service. Like a lot of the stuff that we go through, we don't have to go through. But there's the blockages that we put ourselves, like there's blockages that stop us from setting boundaries. Like we put ourselves through certain things because like we just don't know. It's not to say that you're immature or you're not healed enough. But as humans, like we get hurt and it shows up in our life. But the reality, the reality is life is at our service. You are worthy of everything you desire. This has been such a hard concept for me because I feel like for a majority of my life, I felt like what I wanted did not exist. But the reality is I deserve every single desire that I have and I can get it. I can get it. It may come in a different setting, maybe, but I can get it, okay? Give life permission to create through you and become visible through your dreams. Let me tell y'all. Let me and tell y'all, okay? I would, I I am that person I be sleeping on myself, okay? Let me, let me give you an example. I go to my friend Amber the, with the bake shop, okay? I walk in, she has a team of people where, where, you know, they're working. I'm like, okay, Amber, what you need me to do? She was like, how good are you at tech? And I was like, "Mm, a six maybe. And so she was like, okay, cool. And so basically she made these cookies, but she needed them decorated. And it was, it wasn't like, um, I don't know what it's called. But anyways, she needed me to set up the computer and help decorate the cookies through the computer. Okay, cool. So I get to doing it. And then also, too, in the middle of doing it, I realized, like, I can kind of multitask, which I don't like to multitask. But in this case, you know, crunch time, um, I could do other stuff. And so one of her other helpers was like, and you said you were a six at tech? And Amber was like, I tell Lisa this all the time. She has to stop sleeping on herself. Like, this girl is a genius. Like, she has so much creativity, like, and she does not see it. And I was like, yeah, I always downplay like myself. I always downplay my talents. Like I always do that. And so this card says, give life permission to create through you and become visible through your dreams. I had to just do healing. She got faith. Like I had had this vision for a very long time. I didn't know what it was called. I didn't know what, what it was. I didn't know. I did not know. Okay. 
I did not know. And at some point, I just had to wake up and just allow life to live through me, okay? Create through me. And, and allow us to be visible through your dreams. I have been getting so much feedback on the podcast, on the blog, on the building, on the programs of people just giving me feedback of you are the definition of just live your life, live your dreams. Like people see the authenticity, people see the love, people see the passion, people see the energy, people hear it, people see it, people recognize it. People like you are doing what you have to do and it is being recognized. And so I cannot stress this enough, y'all. Like give life permission to create through you and become visible through you. This was for me. Ugh. This was for me. Okay. This card, I needed to hear this. I needed to see this because I was falling back into that trap of becoming more emotional. I was falling into that trap of um, I'm not good enough. I don't know if the building is gonna make it. I don't know if people are coming into the grand opening. Being hard on myself, not giving myself the grace of bitch, you did this. What's that TikTok? Bitch, you doing a good job. Bitch, you doing a good that that's what I needed, okay? I needed to hear that, that card was for me. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, card number three from the universe has my back. Again, this was a card that I feel like I needed because when I pulled up the card of decks, it was just facing up. It says, my happiness is a direct, oh, I don't know what I just said. My happiness is a direct reflection of my level of faith in the universe. Wow. I think this goes along with the last card. Give life permission to create through you and become visible through your dreams. And then this card says, my happiness is a direct reflection of my level of faith in the universe. And I think that's absolutely true. Because I remember, okay, yeah. Uh, I remember I used to wear my emotions on my sleeve. Like if I was having a bad day, you was going to see it. If I was having a day that like I just didn't really want to be around people, but I was forcing myself to be around people, you were going to see it. Um, But my name is She Got Faith, okay? And so there is a certain level that I have in God. There is a certain level that I have in the universe, in earth, in life, okay? Like there is a level of faith that I have that things will work out. There is a certain level of faith when, like, when I don't really know, I just kind of have to trust. And so I think it does take like that. Like you, you have to have a certain level of faith. And I feel like when I'm in a more healthier and healed space, I am more happier. I am more joyful. I could be really, really sad right now. And I'm not going to go into detail about why. But there's, well, one of the details is because the four-year anniversary of my mom's death. But there's just other things that have happened. There are people who just continue to disappoint me. And I don't know why I keep giving people chance after chance, okay? I, I got to do some more healing. Um, there are people that I just really want to love them. I just really want them to love me. And I just want to support them and see them win. But they don't want it from me. They do not want it from me. As much as they say, oh, you're so special to me, they don't fucking want it from me, okay? They want me, They want to feel how I want them to feel, but they can't because I'm just not that person, okay? And that, that's not just like on a love language, a love interest type of thing. I mean, I, it's for friends. It's for like people that have been in my life for a very long time. Like the reality is I'm just not the one for them. Our journeys have just went two separate ways. We have outgrown each other. We have just went on different paths. Our journeys no longer align. I can't take somebody that continues to lie to themselves because in, in turn they lie to you. And that, like that's what a lot of people are doing right now. Like healing is scary. Healing is not easy. And so when you take this step to decide, like I am going to actively heal and I'm going to actively take this journey serious. It's a lot of dirty work. It's messy. It's painful. It's ugly. <clears throat> it's ugly. I don't know why my voice is cracking out. Probably because I didn't slip. Um, it's ugly. Okay. And so I could be very extremely upset and sad and crying. But I was praying, y'all. I got home at like two o'clock. Um, what was it? Sunday morning, and I was praying because on my way home, I was like, God, I don't know if it's two o'clock in the morning, these emotions are up, honey. 
But God, like, there is certain stuff I just do not want to be bothered by no more. There are certain things I don't want to have emotions for. There are certain topics and people I just don't want to be bothered by. And I had to be very clear with God like, because like, I had a list of names. And I was like, I'm not saying I don't want these people out of my life. But what I'm saying is I want to be so healed that not hearing from them doesn't even bother me. Them not showing up doesn't even bother me. There is no love lost because I respect that people are on their separate journeys. But I want to be so healed and focus on what your promises are to me that what they do doesn't affect me. I don't take it personal. I can't take it personal, honey. Because at the end of the day, I am doing what I have to do, okay? So... Um, the car says my happiness is a direct reflection of my level of faith in the universe. I haven't got no sleep while I'm recording this. I have been running. I have been in my building, sun up to sun down. I have been getting my heart broke. Okay. I have been in therapy. It has been a lot going on and I could really be sad. Okay. The anniversary of my mom's death is here. I could really be upset and I am thoroughly at peace and content and happy with Lisa. I am happy with myself. There are tears that flow and that's perfectly fine. Like we, there's nothing wrong with tears. Okay. Um, but the overall feeling of Lisa, like we doing this shit, we here, this is where we're at. Okay. So yeah. Um, Ah, that was for me. The last card. I am the dreamer of my dreams. Listen, I am. Everything that I'm doing right now, I dreamed, okay? And it is happening, okay? It, it has not been an easy journey, but everything I'm doing, I've literally dreamed. And that, that's where we are. We're here, okay? So those are the four cards. They will be in the show notes. And yeah, thank y'all for listening to the Icebreaker. Um, I'm going to be completely honest with y'all. This is going to be a short episode today. Um, today's episode is episode 41. We are in the, uh, grief of power series. And today is the recap of month six. Month six is the six month journey. Uh, wait, I'm sorry. Month six of my healing journey challenge that I started back in April. So this month is celebration and reflection. Um, by celebration, What I've been doing is just, it's been kind of, I continued to showing gratitude and really just giving myself kudos for doing what I never thought could be done. And so that has been my celebration, doing what, doing what I never thought would ever be possible. My reflection is I've came such a long way and this month I didn't really do a lot like I did in the last five months as far as like activities. So like, you know, I did physical activities. I did all type of stuff. But the reality was I actually um, just didn't do a lot. I, I kind of rested this month. And I think that was my celebration and my reflection. Like I rested on myself. Like I allow myself to feel. I allow myself to to rest. I allow myself to be at a place where we could just be, um, be still and know there's power in stillness. I allow myself to grieve. I allow myself to be honest. I allow myself to be put in a position to where, um, I didn't have to like hide my hurt. I didn't have to lie about like me being okay. It was a lot. And I was very, very much proud of myself for doing that. Like, it it was a lot, but it was much needed. And it was something that I needed to do. And so one of the things I talked about in therapy recently was, like, how I'm always busy. And so, like, when you're always busy, realizing that, like, realizing that Being busy is a coping mechanism, okay? Um, Being busy is a coping mechanism. And being busy is something that we all do when we do not feel like we are... Okay, let me stop being around the bush. We make ourselves busy because we don't actually feel... We don't want to feel what we feel. 
we don't want to be hurt. We don't want to feel the anger. We don't want to be sad. We 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 don't want to judge ourselves because that's a lot of times what we do. That's what we're doing. We're judging ourselves for having feelings. And the reality is we are allowed to feel this. We are allowed to be who we are. We are allowed to be who we are and we are allowed to feel what we feel. And it might be uncomfortable. And I think... That that is okay. I firmly believe that that's fine. That we feel the way we feel. Okay. But we get so uncomfortable. We we get so uncomfortable with the with, with just being one with ourselves. When in actuality, like, I am at this place in my life where I can no longer... I can no longer afford to continue to lie to people who I can no longer afford to lie to people about how I feel because I don't I don't want to address it. I can no longer afford to lie to myself and to lie to people because I don't have boundaries. And so I think like this month of reflection and celebration has been just that like. There has been conversations that I have had had with people that have been like, listen, I think I'm getting too deep for you. So I'm actually just going to set this boundary and just not talk. And it throws people off. Like I've had people who've been like, oh, Lisa, I'm here for you. But there is a distrust there. Like I said, there are certain people that I just I don't necessarily know um, like what our relationship is. I don't necessarily know like with this healing journey, what that looks like and stuff like that. However, you know, like when people are like, oh, Lisa, but I'm here from you, like you're special to me. But in my head, there's distrust because, you know, you say that, but there's nothing there to prove, you know. And so being able to say that, like, yeah, you say that, but like you have yet to prove to me that I'm that special to you. You have yet to prove to me that I'm actually a friend to you. You have yet to prove to me that like anything that I that I do means anything to you. You have yet to do that and being okay with the relationship. That's it. That that that's it, y'all. I just said it. Being okay with life. Isn't that what one of the cards say? I think like one of the cards, um, life is at your service. I think that's it. Just being okay with life. Being okay with this is it. This is life. This is where we're at. And that's a hard place to be, y'all. I ain't even gonna lie to you. Because for so long I've wanted to fight for people. I wanted to fight for all this type of stuff. And, you know, weird. <laughs> so just real quick, um, that's really all I have to say for today. But just real quick. So this, this my healing challenge is done. Oh, I can't believe it. Um, so month one was just healing. I just had to learn what was healing what was it about what did it look like how how was i handling it um i'm pulling up my tiktok because i want to see um the last video i actually posted um of my healing journey um okay so yeah and then I do a little mini videos on TikTok. So y'all can follow me as She Got Faith on TikTok. So month one was just healing. I just had to like, what is healing? What was this journey going to look like? Um, what did I want out of the journey? Like I was I, I took the idea from a couple creators on TikTok. So like what what was my goal with this whole thing? Month two was discipline. I started working out. I tried to start eating better. Working out and eating wasn't as consistent towards the end of the journey, but it was definitely something that I needed. I also went through a couple of life lessons with that because um, I no longer associate with the person I was doing personal training with. And also, too, like just really figuring out what it is. And also, too, I want to talk about discipline. So I read Atomic Habits and... I have a whole new outlook on discipline. So the next time I do something like this, I'm actually going to take some of the resources from the book Atomic Habits and focus on discipline because I felt like I did such a cliche way of discipline that I want to actually try it a different way. Three was being intentional. So being very intentional with myself. So allowing myself to just be allowing myself to feel, think, whatever. 
um, being intentional with the things that I did daily, being intentional with my actions, being intentional with the people that I'm around. So I also had to relearn what intentionality was and what it looked like and what I thought I was doing. And then month four was month of peace. And so month of four, I went to Cabo and I just was at peace with where I was in life. And I think that was the first time I was able to not worry, not stress, not cry. And I, not, not, not cry because I do cry and I do believe crying is healthy. And so I do allow myself that space to cry. And then month five was month was the month of gratitude where I just showed myself, I showed my building, I showed God, I showed the world this gratefulness that I've always had the struggle to show. And then month six was um, celebration and reflection, which is kind of what I just did today. Celebrating um, a different form of celebrating, which is um, resting and then reflecting, like, what did I learn this month? What was it that I actually like had to do and like, what are my, um, you know, where was my goal met, you know, and if my goal wasn't met, then like, what's our next step? And so I think like, that's really important to do. Like this healing challenge journey has been very, very special to me. And I love it. I love the person that I have become. I love the woman that I am becoming. Okay. Um, I've took a lot of hard lessons. I took a lot of, I took a lot of L's and I took a lot of L's that like nobody actually knows about. But I took a lot of L's and, um, but I saw a lot of wins, you know, it wasn't as many as the L's, but I think like the internal wins was what that mattered. The healing, the growth, the boundaries, um, the writing. I think a lot of the stuff, the wins didn't look like a trophy or didn't look like a husband or anything like that, but it looked like, wow, like I have made it so far in this healing journey that I actually can look myself in the mirror and recognize who I am. Like I actually love who I am. I love my red, orange, and yellow hair. I love my body type. I am no longer trying to be skinny. Like I'm trying to be healthy, but I'm like, I'm okay with my body. I think my body is beautiful. I think my personality is beautiful. I think everything, you know, stuff that I used to beat myself up on, like, I don't know how to dress and just realizing like, you know what, like it's not, you know, I'm just not a fashionable person because it's just not a desire of mine. Like I'm, I'm a person that likes to be comfortable. That was so hard because I used to always feel like I would go out and people would be dressed up and I would be like in a crop top and some jeans. And now like, it's crazy because people are like, Oh, Lisa, you inspired me so much. Cause you're going to wear you a crop top. You wear, whether it's uh summer, fall, winter, like Lisa going to have on a crop top and, and it looks good on you. And you give me confidence that you wear your waist bees and all type of stuff. So um, people come up to me now, you know, people like, oh, I love this red, orange, and yellow hair. Like, you pulled it off. This is definitely your thing. Like, you, you know, you pull it off. And so not giving myself that credit because I used to be like, oh, I don't have a slim waist. I'm not skinny. I don't got no booty. Um, I don't know how to do hair. But, like, just being comfortable with who I am because, I mean, that that's all I want. I want to be comfortable in this life. Like, we, we here. So I need to be comfortable. Um, and so I think that's really powerful on my end. Like, I think that's so powerful to be at that place of I really accept myself and I'm no longer going to be hard on myself. Ah! So if you've been on this six one journey, thank you. Um, I don't know what October, November, December is going to look like, but I know it's going to be prepping for 2023. And I definitely know I'm going to be doing some things differently and i'm just excited i'm excited for my growth i'm excited for the people that's going to be here i'm excited for just i'm just excited for me y'all so um i hope you have a happy monday i love you all um are there any housekeeping yeah housekeeping check out the blog on wednesday three o'clock healing she got faith dot why did i just forget my website oh my gosh I need some sleep, y'all. HealingSheGotFaith.org slash blog. It comes on at 3 o'clock p.m. We are having our grand opening October 23rd, starting at 1 p.m. It will go to 4. You can RSVP on Eventbrite. The link will be in the show notes. We are also looking for sponsorships and donations. And what I mean by that is like, we're looking for people to like sponsor having water in the office, snacks, a 
um, we'll have a coffee bar. So people sponsoring coffee. We're also looking for somebody to sponsor like Costco, a Costco membership. Um, also too, we are looking for like local artists who would like their artwork displayed. So like we would be able to display it throughout the office. Um, other than that, y'all, that's really all I have as far as housekeeping. Um, check out the website. We do have a new website coming soon. It'll probably be launched right before the, oh, not the book launch. The, um, damn, what am I having? The grand opening. I need some sleep, y'all. Ah, okay. So yeah, that's housekeeping. Um, but yeah, happy Monday. Check us out on Wednesday and I will meet you back here Monday at three o'clock. Love y'all. Love you the way you let it work.